Welcome back. We're up at the cabin now. Got the pressure washer up here for the first time. I'm gonna do the same flow rate test that I did back at the house in the city. Got my big pail. We're gonna head over to the spigot and we're gonna check that GPM. So up here at the cottage, I'm on a well. It's about 425 feet down. And yep, it wasn't cheap. I've got a pressure tank in the basement. I believe it's 25 gallons. And so what we're gonna do here is I'm gonna run this test multiple times, three, four, five times, and try to get an average GPM or flow rate. If you don't have a well or you're not familiar with it, what happens is the well pump will fill the pressure tank in the basement. And over time, as you're using water in the home, it slowly depletes. And as it depletes, the flow rate coming out of the spigot or the hose is also going to decrease. So what I'd like to do is try to get a number of different tests so I can average across and see what the difference is across those different tests. That'll give me kind of an idea before I hook this thing up and fire it up. But I'm hoping it's gonna work because I'd love to just get one pressure washer that'll serve both residences as opposed to having to get a different one down in the city as I do up here at the cabin. Let's start her up. Okay. Got the stopwatch. Let's crank her open. Well, I'm pretty encouraged and pretty happy. I conducted the test five times. Took a look at the numbers and checked the GPM or the flow rate. It was relatively consistent or almost the same on every test. I wanted to make sure I got a chance to make the pressure tank click in or turn on during that test just to see what the difference or if there'd be any noticeable or if there was a negligible difference in the flow rate. And although you could see it drop a bit just before the tank kicked in, it didn't last long and it maintained its, its flow. In all five cases, the flow was more than the minimum input requirement for the pump on this Briggs & Stratton. So that's pretty good news. I'm pretty encouraged because I've tried a couple of other pressure washers up here at the cottage. And as I mentioned, I'm on a well. And um, sometimes pressure washers don't perform well when you're on a well. The big test, of course, is to pull the tractor out and put this into production and see how well it performs. Hooked her up, and let me tell you, this red 3000 PSI tip, you don't ever want to use this on your car or your truck. It did a fabulous job of stripping the paint and all the corrosion off of that trailer frame before I painted it yesterday. I was pretty impressed. Even on our water here on the well, did great. I've been looking for a pressure washer for a long time on and off. Wasn't really sure just how big it should be or how much pressure I should be looking at. This is what they call a medium duty pressure washer. And I think after yesterday's test, 3000 PSI is all I need. In fact, it's a little more than I need, generally speaking. I was really pleased when the good folks at Briggs & Stratton sent this over for me to try out this summer. I'm really looking forward to putting it to its test and seeing just how well it operates here in the city and here up at the cottage. Cottage being the main concern with this water supply. When I used it on that trailer frame, I noticed that as the well pump kicked in, the first two times I did lose pressure temporarily. I let go of the wand, but after that, for the entire exercise, it never lost pressure again. So I was pretty pleased with that. If you're looking for a pressure washer yourself, I'll tell you there's a few things that I've been looking for that I found are going to be very helpful features on any pressure washer. One of the most important ones, I think, is the length of this hose. A lot of them will have a 10 or a 12 or a 15 foot hose. In my experience with my last pressure washers, it's never enough to get you around the truck. You want at least 20 feet. This Briggs & Stratton has a 25 foot hose and I think that works out really well. The old pressure washer I had basically had a twist or a handle in the middle of the wand that you twisted to adjust pressure. This is really nice. It's got four different tips 
one for washing with detergent, one that gives you that 3000 PSI that you only want to use in extreme conditions. And then you've got two different degree tips that'll give you a difference in pressure as well as a difference in spray, of course. If you're looking for one, try to find one that's got good quality brass tips, not plastic tips. On this unit here, the low pressure detergent tip is plastic. So it's not a big deal, but you definitely want really good fittings. And you also want to make sure that the end of the wand has a nice, good quality brass quick connect. So much simpler, and at least you now know or can control what type of pressure you're actually applying to whatever your activity is. Whereas the old one I had, I had to twist the wand. And as you twisted the wand after a little while, you'd either kind of lose sight of where you were at, or just in the natural motion of using it, you would naturally start turning the pressure up without realizing it. Good strong engine. This unit's got a six, six and a half horsepower. It's a CR950. I like it because it's got a built-in fuel shutoff, which is really handy because a lot of times, especially during the winter, you're gonna store this. And it's great to be able to drain that carb pretty easily, as well as it's got an on and off switch on the side. Like many washers, you can use detergent through a wash tip. This one has a siphon style where you simply stick the tube in your jug of detergent and it'll siphon it into the line. There are some models that have a built-in tank for detergent. If you are looking at that type of model, try to make sure that it's got some kind of a drain plug. There are a number of different types of detergents that are made for pressure washers, some much more harsher than others. So for example, the detergent I'm gonna to use to clean my garbage cans is not the same as the car wash detergent I wanna put on my truck. So if you've got a tank built in, you wanna make sure it has the ability to drain. Nice thing about a siphon hose, you stick it in whichever jug you choose after you've mixed. Another nice feature I found on this Briggs & Stratton, it has a little drain plug here at the end or the side of the pump. As you know with these units, the pump is kept cool by the flow of water. When you let go of the wand and you stop spraying, the water no longer flows through the pump. Pumps will start to heat up and this has a little built-in spout here. If the pump starts to get too hot, it'll open the valve and it'll start draining water out to force a flow through the pump to help cool it down. Smart thinking. Another couple of features I like about this Briggs & Stratton, it's got a built-in hanger for your hose and it actually fits. It also has a spot for you to hang your wand. The last pressure washer I owned had no hanger for the hose and no spot for the wand. Certainly not the end of the world if the pressure washer didn't have it, but it's really handy being able to keep all the parts together, especially when you're storing it into the garage or into the shed. You don't have to worry about winding up the hose and strapping it down and taking the wand apart and finding some shelf space to store them separately. So that was the white tip. It's actually a pretty gentle tip. It's not so bad. In fact, it does a good job. I was a little worried about the paint, so I want to take this in steps. I used the big red one, and I know not to use the red one on the paint, so I decided to start with the lowest one. It does okay. It doesn't get the grime off, but there's not a lot of pressure. You could probably tell coming out of the wand, but there's just enough. It's gentle, not going to hurt the paint. This is a little bit more serious back here, so I'm going to bump it up to the yellow tip, which is a 15 degree tip. We're gonna see how that operates. Okay, big difference.
Well, she's nice and clean now. Some observations so far after a few uses. As I mentioned, down in the city, I'm on city water, so I've got no problem with flow. I've got really good water flow down at the house. Up here at the cottage, I've got my pressure tank and I'm on a well with a well pump. As I mentioned, I use the highest pressure zero degree tip, which is 3000 PSI. Definitely not something I'd use on my tractor, the painted surface, or on my truck or vehicles, or anywhere that I had a painted surface. It comes out really, really hard. Did an excellent job of stripping the frame down on that log trailer though yesterday. Really pressed with the, the results. Literally was peeling the paint off of the metal. I haven't used the detergent yet, but I'll do that in time. I started out, because I'm just getting familiar with this Briggs & Stratton, and I decided to use the white or the 40 degree tip. Came out much softer than I expected, but of course very gentle on the paint. Didn't do a great job of trying to remove grease, but it did you know, a very good job on cleaning the dirt and the grime off so I could take the soapy brush to it and spray it off really nice. Did a great job, very gentle. This yellow tip though, this is a 15 degree tip and I think it's about 28 PSI, 2800 PSI. This, huge difference in pressure between this white tip and this yellow. Yellow is, I'm not sure yet what, whether I wanna try it on the paint yet, but it did an excellent job on my three point hitch and on the front end loader, really peeled back the grease and the dirt off it really nicely. And I didn't lose any paint that I could see. Very impressed, but I was surprised at the difference between the pressure coming out of the white, which is your 40 degree tip, and this one coming out of the 15. Big noticeable difference, as you folks probably saw. Performance worked really well. Being on this well pump, I did notice that when I was using the red tip on the trailer frame, the first couple of times I could feel or I could hear the pump turn on on the well, Pressure dropped on the wand. I let go of it, gave it a minute, did it again, took a second. But for the rest of the afternoon, when I was pressure washing the frame, didn't lose pressure at all, even though the pump was cycling. But as one of my subscribers told me, he's got the same thing at where he lives. As soon as you start to see it lose pressure, just release the wand, wait about 15, 20 seconds and push it, and you get your pressure back. Thanks so much for sticking around today. I hope you found it helpful, especially if you've got a property that's on a well. I want to send out a special thanks to the good folks at Briggs & Stratton Canada for loaning me their 3000 PSI pressure washer. So far so good. I'm pretty pleased. I'm going to continue to test this in different ways throughout the summer or over the next period and I'll keep you up to date and let you know what I've found after I've gotten some good use or experience under my belt with it. If you like the channel, please click subscribe, hit the like button, and if you want to know when I'm posting videos, just click that little bell. Have a wonderful and safe weekend with your families. Please be kind to one another. And I'll see you again right here on GP Outdoors. Cheers.